All right, and so before we introduce our guest science, before we have him come out, let's give you guys a little bit of background on him. He got, his name's Terry Johnson. He got his master's degree in chemical engineering from MIT, associate teaching professor of bioengineering at UC Berkeley. And in 2010, he received the Golden Apple Award for Outstanding Teaching. So cool, teaching is so important. Um, is one of the recipients of Berkeley's 2013 Distinguished Teaching Award. Did he say teachering is so important? Teachering. Teachering. <laughs> teachering. <laughs> teachering. The most important Did your thing. teacher teachering you that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, this last point's great, too. He co-authored a popular science book called How to Defeat Your Own Clone and Other Tips for Surviving the Biotech Revolution. Let's bring him out, Terry Johnson! Round of applause. <laughs> Thank oh, you. yes. Terry, it is so wonderful to have you. Terry, have you ever been on stage with comedians before? I was once at an improv show, and I was called up uh, as one of the guinea pigs. Did they make you sing? <laughs> no, it was one of those uh, where you had to answer in a group of three, and everybody got to do one word. Right. Yes, so it, as if we would have to go um, at... Eureka. I. C. Uh, this is how it went. Okay, that was super <laughs> funny, too. I thought, <laughs> wait, no, so you I went to an improv show, they picked three people from the audience, and they made you do the show? That's amazing. I was the one in the middle. I think the other two were a part of the show. <laughs> You're like, I think, I don't know. <laughs> I think we should do a whole Eureka format, popcorn like that, and just see where it goes. See where it goes, one long. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's on, on the to-do list. <laughs> it's on the to-do list. So... Um, and just a quick question before we start, and we offer you guys the opportunity to answer Terry's great questions. Um, biotech, bioengineering, synthetic biology, s incredible field, um, tapping into the code of life. Uh, what does that mean for society as we're able to parse that and apply it to our lives? Can we just, what does that mean? Not even for society, just what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, good, good starting point. Yeah. Uh, so, there's a, like any group of academics, if you ask 10 of them, you'll get 30 different answers. But uh, my favorite for bioengineering is figuring out ways to solve human problems using biological systems or things that you learn from biology. And some examples, maybe? Um, so one of the things that I'm really interested about uh, is how do we make things that people need um, that are usually made uh, expensively from things like oil, um, using bacteria and yeast instead? How do we switch over to more sustainable biological processes? So like a cheaper stuff? like yeast Gucci handbag or something? Th there is a, a group working on bioengineered leather for okay. handbags. There you Michael go. See, I know what I'm talking about. How did about. you get to that point? How did you get to that point where you're like, I just want to take dirt and just kind of make profit off of that? Like when you were six, where you're like, you know what? I feel like I could make a car out of bacteria. I like pig pen from peanuts. <laughs> yeah. I think it was more when I was six, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And what? I kind of randomly uh, ended up in this chemical engineering thing. And at I liked six? it. Okay. Yes, yeah, at six. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> and you got a snazzy vest on. You were like so far ahead yeah, of me. That, yeah, that's how we got all this stuff. You got to start at six to get all of that. Yeah. The, the irony is you do dress like Dawson from Dawson's Creek, but you look a little bit like, uh, like Ryan Reynolds and Dawson. <laughs> kind of having a kid together. I feel like you're describing a dream of yours right now. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah. <laughs> I'm I think I'd like to hear more. Right. Yeah, I like this dream. And then you took the vest. Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I wore the vest. Yeah, okay. All right. You guys ready? Yeah? yeah? All right. So we'll have you read off the questions, Terry. Okay. All right. Uh, why might a bioengineer adopt Prometheus the Titan as a mascot? Uh, does Prometheus take out the garbage and do other stuff? Is it... Is it like this convenient mascot? Does he dunk off of a trampoline? He's got to have a big head. <laughs> <laughs> These are all excellent starting guesses. I imagine they are. <laughs> we're, sl we're setting the bar low for you guys. Just letting all you right, let's take Anybody some answers, answers from the audience. Because when he gets tied to a rock and an eagle eats, eats his liver, he can grow a new one. Ah, uh, regeneration, yes. Oh. Is that correct? Eureka! 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 All right, come on down, my man. Good answer. Well, this prize may be a... A house cow we do? What's that? Well, we'll find out. Did you, you're familiar with the story. Um, Are you? You can turn around. Well, you didn't just make that up. You're familiar with the story. Like, he oh, always no. answers about an eagle <laughs> eating somebody's chest. That's not how it's going to end. <laughs> Credits thing. I got 
You got nothing. All right. <laughs> Is something eating your chest? Well, now you can actually read the play. And Ooh. you can learn about the myth. Prometheus Ooh. Bound. It's not that long. And now you can sound so scholarly when you uh, when you answer. Is Prometheus the next question. Bound about someone who's going to Prometheus, or is it about Prometheus actually tied up? It sounds like something you'd film at the armory. Yeah. This is oh, true. Yeah. Read that at the Another Folsom Street show. Fair. Give him a round of applause. Yeah, Woo. good answer. So, what is the significance of this question and the answer? Uh, so when I was in graduate school, I worked on liver tissue engineering, uh, and the goal was uh, to effectively figure out a way to make something liver or liver-ish, that when you put it into someone, they, it would become liver, uh, because there weren't enough transplant livers to go around. And so tell us a little bit about that process. Uh, does that involve a human stem cell, and then growth of that into, with the, some, scaf some scaffolding into a liver? Can you teach us about that? And how many steps before you're actually Dr. Frankenstein? <laughs> Uh, considering in the two and a half years that I did this, I did not succeed. Um, I think pretty far. Okay, uh, got it, got it. But in the intervening 16 years, no one else has succeeded, so I don't feel quite as bad. It's a hard problem. Are right? you rooting against them actively? Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. I would be so mad if they figured it. Yeah. Just throw uh, levers on the ground. Useless! <laughs> Uh, we worked um, near basically a hospital that did a decent number of transplants, right? Uh, and the transplant list is really long. There's a lot of demand for livers. Um, early on, people thought it's highly regenerative. If you actually have a lobe of your liver removed, the rest of your liver will just get bigger and pretty much um, regain the function, right? So maybe we could do that outside of the body. It turns out to be really hard. Uh, but what you would do, or what we were trying to do, was kind of make a home. It would look like a sponge. Um, the sponge would be made out of fancy polymers and a bunch of other kind of signals to make the cells do what we want them to do. You'd put cells down. Um, we tried lots of different cells. We tried stem cells. Um, we tried uh, adult liver cells. Um, but basically make a home that would cause them to sort of recreate liver. Wait, mm. if liver can automatically regenerate, why is Prometheus so cool? <laughs> I feel like it, it can happen for anyone, right? Uh, I think, I mean, I don't know that the eagle was surgical about the removal. Um, mm. But it knew what it wanted. Overnight, <laughs> right, is still pretty good. Right, got it, okay. So we're well, trying to do it overnight, that's Well, how long does it take it, you know, for it to regenerate like a chunk of liver? Um, I don't remember offhand, but I'd say months. Months. Good got, to got know. A question. Next we, have time. A, we have a question. Hold on a second. Let's Prometheus see a has a question. He just read oh, yeah. the book. He just, he like, I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> he just flipped through. Uh, yeah. Hi hypothetically speaking, if you could regenerate an entire liver from a few cells, would the, uh, given that they say cells can like maybe reproduce, I don't know, 50 or 100 times in the lifetime of a person, uh, and it degrades like the telomere endings or telomeres or whatever you call them, uh, is it possible that if you grew a liver like that, it would just be really effectively like really old before you even started using it? So it depends on how you'd put it together. Um, and the, the issue here is that you know, there are different cell types in the body that will uh, only grow a certain number of times before they'll stop growing. Um, and the goal would be probably to use stem cells either for a part um, or the whole in such a way that there's always a reservoir of stem cells that can replicate, basically, slowly replace the cells that have pooped out. Pooped out, that's a technical term? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, you don't get Those a master's without saying pooped out. Looks like out. his heart pooped out. <laughs> Poor fella. Yeah, that, that's pretty close to how Pretty close talk. to how yeah. it is. Poop well, I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, when uh, we were talking about transplants, I was talking to the doctors for the first time that did the transplants. Um, they immediately referred to motorcycles as donor cycles. Okay, okay. man, yes. they got the humor going on right there. <laughs> That's a good time. That's a good That's time. That's a good time, so that is in the ER. Hey, we got another donor cycle. You can just imagine like a doctor driving recklessly on the road, like I gotta get a couple livers for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's bow, bow. They <laughs> live, they die, donors. but they live. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's Smart. a possibility. And maybe, Terry, you tell us about what the current state is of organ engineering, tissue engineering. Because you, you said you were unsuccessful. Uh, how, and how many years ago was that? And where are we now? How many 
years ago question is painful. Ooh. 2001 is when I started here at Berkeley. So I, I ended up on this six, project. You were six, though. Remember that. <laughs> yeah. six. He was six. He's young. I could yeah. barely reach the pipette. <laughs> um, uh, so there are a number of tissue engineered organs. I think since the late 90s, we've had um, options for skin and cartilage. Um, but a lot of what people are interested in now in regenerative medicine are not building the whole thing outside of the body, but um, targeted injections of cells that'll kind of do their own healing and reorganization, or um, to build cell-free substances because they're you know easier to work with, like polymers that are attractive to cells so that they make, you put them in as kind of a really fancy bandage that attracts cells to come in and do what they need to do to turn that fancy bandage back into tissue. So it actually turns it into tissue or is it like a mold so that it like, they gather around it and like become the organ? Usually it'll design that uh, fancy bandage so it'll really slowly dissolve in the body um, as the cells are basically like laying down biological bricks. And you could give it like a different shape. Have you thought of that? Like maybe like a guitar or something? Ooh. I don't know, something cool. You can make a liver a heart shape and really confuse oh. like the x-ray text. I don't know. You're going to love some pictures we have coming up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Should we take a peek at those pictures? Let's do it. Let's move on. All right. Wow. Oh. Ooh. That's not a liver. That's not OK. <laughs> I, I, I would quiet. It can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I've told that joke in every class that I have shown that picture. He crushes it <laughs> every time. You don't win a golden apple without that joke. <laughs> oh man, I can think of a little earwax too in there. I think. Was there a purpose to this, or was it like, can we just grow an ear on the back of a rat? It was funsies. No, it was funsies. Um, so the the goal here was to make um, a cartilage ear shape. Right, so that's cartilage with some cartilage cells in it. Uh, and it's being put under the skin of a, a mouse to determine whether it, uh, the mouse's blood supply can keep those cartilage cells alive. So this would be something where if you lost an ear, which skin cancer is uh, definitely an option, but, you know, injury as well, that you could make a cartilage replacement, uh, a biological replacement to replace it. That's attached to a mouse, though. That's cool. It's no worries to have a mouse here with the That's ear. That's right, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Fine. It's well, the fine. mouse can hold on. Hold on, yeah. right. And so did, did, it, uh, did it keep the cartilage cells alive? Did it? Uh, yeah, for a relatively, um, I think that that one was probably a couple weeks. Yeah, what? that was one of the first proofs of principles. This one happened again, I think, in the late 90s. Is it required to use a devil mouse, or can any mouse? Like, what is going on with that? Yeah, you see the what eyes of this. Happening? What did cats think about this? They're just like, ah, oh, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> we have not tested that, but now that you've said it, we probably should. It's probably a good a idea. You know, you put a cat with like a nose growing on its back, <laughs> <laughs> and just let the children play with it and said, you welcome to the 21st century. Yeah, this is it. Uh, this is what you're going to play with. New Tom and yeah. Jerry, yeah. That's, and how long did this mouse live, by the way? Oh, like a day, tops. Oh, Do you oh know? Um, until they needed to get the tissue from the ear out. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh, nice. so you can't yeah. remove it without sacrificing the mouse. Oh, wow, okay. Wow, all right. Yeah. Talk about donors. Yeah, talk, I'm, don't Sorry. believe in reincarnation. I don't want to be that mouse. That's something. Ooh. That's a good question. Oh. We have another question from the audience. It's a great Aside one. We'll from get that back one, that's to a good one. That's a great one, but we'll Keep get back it in your mind 24 I, hours. This, this one's pretty silly. Um, there was a South Park uh, scene on earlier, and another South Park episode had uh, something quite similar to this. I'm not sure if you've seen the episode. I don't think I have, no. Okay, well, they grew a dick on a mouse. Um, is that going to be possible? <laughs> one, and but when? For a friend. And when? I thought and how long? Don't male mice have and dicks? And how wide? No, but it's second, they have ears, too. That hasn't stopped us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you explain, like, the social benefit first, maybe? Yeah, I think, oh, I'm, yeah. Gonna, right. I think yeah. I'm gonna go in that direction. Um, uh, potentially, yes. Um, I have uh, heard Career people change at least, alert. Okay. Uh, at least uh, talk about that. And I think that there mm -hmm. have been people that have looked into um, not necessarily erectile tissue, uh, but I'm going to be serious about this. Um, but if, you know, someone lost a penis uh, to produce something that would be penis-shaped and biological. So they say, hey, baby, you want to see my Mickey Mouse? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a mouse stick. Like, yep. You know, it's like, it look works. where this thing. So they, you think they could actually then grow the whole, you know, the antenna on top of the mouse, essentially. Can you grow multiple body parts in the same mouse? A bigger mouse, maybe. Can we just grow a human on a mouse? So we don't we don't <laughs> grow them on the mouse. We we uh, make the mold outside of the body, and then we are basically attaching it under the skin of the mouse to keep the tissue alive. Who gets to makes the make? Who gets to make the mold? Whose job is that? That's <laughs> oh. a pretty cool job. Oh yeah, I've got some molds you can use if you need. I mean, I'd like I have a friend. Who has yeah. <laughs> You can, maybe we should it's it's been a good in, insert <laughs> armory joke here. Yeah, one one more. Tell us about that. Uh, that is actually another cartilage um, cell ear uh, in a bioreactor, and um, it was uh, one of the living family members of Van Gogh. Uh, so really? Was, yeah, this was an art project. Smart. They finally grew it back. Yes, yeah, it, it, it's a little late, but you know. So that's one of the there. descendants of Van Gogh's ear. I mean, Van Gogh, it's a, one of the descendants' ears, right? What it is grown using cells, oh, cells. from one of the okay. descendants. Okay, but not modeled after their ear. And, and just, and Maybe. So, and so, yes, so tissue engineering, organs, we'll keep going. We have more questions. But I have so many so about this one. Okay. Let's go back to the dick <laughs> on the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> SNL video sketch. Right, it's a dick in a mouse. Dick in okay, so this room contains uh, sophisticated bioreactors. Can anyone name them? All right, mm. hold on. Oh, okay. we, we, quick hand. Got hands. a couple. Yeah. Quick hands. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll go yeah. with that one. Yeah. yeah. Eureka. Eureka. Oh, Eureka. right. Eureka. Terry's a bioreactor. Come on down. <laughs> we got notes. All right, how about for you, hey. sir? We Wait, have. Is, is your name Terry? <laughs> okay. Keith, <laughs> now, now, why'd you think Terry was a bioreactor? Just the way he looks, the glint in his eye? So, like, he looked kind of boxy and. <laughs> Rude. I'll take it. You take it? Okay. He felt like this guy, yes. Stuff could happen inside his body. All right, great. We have for you this book, Read Genesis. George Church, he's a professor at uh, Harvard. Yes, How Synthetic Biology Will Reinvent Nature and Ourselves. Enjoy it. All right, round of applause. Awesome. Woo. They so, just announced they're going to make a movie uh, based on George Church's really? life. Yeah. What's that going to be called? Uh, Dick on a mouth. <laughs> Reference to the Woolly Mammoth Project. Okay, great. Why do I feel like all the prizes came out of a library? Yeah, also, yes, the I feel like yeah, these aren't like you. fun prizes so <laughs> far. <laughs> so well, that was educational. <laughs> Heavy reading. Up. Okay, got it, it got it. Okay. All right, Prometheus a, Bound is a laugh riot. It is. It is yeah, a laugh I've riot. I've heard good things. So, oh, boy. we're bioreactors, and we take advantage of this. Um, these were some of the pictures that I was talking about earlier. That little bump right there is actually a bone, I believe, for a jaw replacement that's really? being grown under the skin. Um, so they make the shape, um, and it's implanted in the body because it's actually really hard to keep human tissue happy, right? Or animal tissue happy. Uh, it needs the right temperature, it needs oxygen, it needs food, it needs all these signals to sort of maintain itself. And one of the ways to do that is with the body. This is a cheap, by the way, I believe that uh, over there the, the nose is a transplant, but they're effectively keeping ah. the transplant alive um, until the uh, tissue that they're gonna transplant it on are healthy enough to do that. Wait, wait, I was uh, like, what, they were like, we has to be on the face, but definitely not where the nose goes. Yeah, <laughs> not where it should go. <laughs> no, no. You gotta pay the price, buddy. <laughs> No, let's not do it where it'll look yeah. most normal. Yeah. Stick it underneath the armpit instead of the yeah. chin. Let me <laughs> sprinkle cocaine on your forehead. Uh, so, so wait, let's, where did this nose come from? Um, motorcycle rider? <laughs> <laughs> motorcycle <laughs> rider 2B? Great helmet, but he had nothing else. Yeah, nothing else. Um, I actually, I do not remember whether this one is um, a cartilage uh, shape. Right. Um, or some sort of recovered tissue. Um, so recovered I from cadaver, potentially. Cadaver. Because I think that's going to be a pretty big nose on this man. I'm just, I, does anyone else, like do you feel like? Well, yeah. then you'll have to get a nose job. I mean, you He's could probably huge. fix it in post a little bit, but. A wait, huge ass. So you had to, here's the thing that confuses me. Photoshop like, in real life? You had to, you had to kill the, the mouse to get the ear out. You have to kill this guy to get the nose out? Because I feel like that's counterproductive. You've discovered the flaw in this plan. Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> I'm blowing wide open. But every, not everyone needs a nose, right? Uh, you don't need a nose. 
So, so the flaw then is that if we grow it inside of the human bioreactor, we have to harm the human in order to take it out versus... Oh, no. I mean, really, so for example, the jawbone, um, effectively, that's painless, right? Um, you, is it you, really painless? Oh, come on, yeah. man. Looks like yeah. a giant zit no waiting to be popped. Involved oh, in, no, like, no. no. Cutting that out? People, people <laughs> come in to the doctor with like um, eight centimeter tumors. They're like, I didn't know anything was wrong, right? right. I yeah. mean, that that's not a big deal. It's child's um, play right it's there. It's effectively just keeping it alive for a while and then you get a new jaw, right? Like right. extra large t-shirts probably. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the uh, right here, it's like I get an ear for the rest of my life and I wear long sleeves for like six weeks. But he kind of decorated his ear, let's be honest. He was bored. Yeah, it looks like, like a, he just went, no, that's iPod. why they're gonna cut it out. Cut it out, man. They were like, no, we're gonna the, cut it here, and then the doctor was like, actually, you know what? That circle's not big enough. Let's just let's make it look like, like a toaster. I feel like, like he toaster. was yeah. drunk too. Then he was like, and then I'm just gonna draw this line. That over looks here. like a mouse. That you know, yeah. computer. Yeah, from all of the previous times that I've learned about tissue engineering, it's always been outside of the body. But this way, you can grow it within your own body, with your own cells, your own nutrients, and then have an ear or an extra nose or whatever part of your body got injured, you can therefore have a part of that body. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of times now people, partially because it's just easier to do the testing, want to make a mold that is just a great place for your own cells to come in and reorganize. So you don't add the cells at all, you just need to put it into a place where it's got access to a blood supply and cells and they can come in and turn it into tissue. We got another question over here. One second. Here it comes. Um, first of all, it looks like a gremlin. Second of all, um, there was a trend in some Asian cultures where they were putting donuts, donut-shaped uh, collagen into the head, and it would uh, do a lot of things like that. Uh, does that have anything to do with the same format, or is that just a fad? I do not know because I that that I'm unfamiliar with. You're not you're not familiar with the donut head. You, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't fuck with the Asian uh, <laughs> fetishes or whatever. Would you call it? How many Fats? people have ever saw the photos out there of the, the donuts that? Okay, see, some people know. That's a real thing. And the everything bagel, you saw that one too. That was a classy one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. There was <laughs> like a hummus dripping was, down. Was, was it cronut? Cronut. Yeah, that cronut. was good. That was really I had to good. wait in line to get that yeah. one in my head. Jesus. <laughs> But, but having said that, um, there are a lot of companies right now that are promising stem cell treatments that are just injections of rando cells, like BS, uh, plastic surgery places. And so, what, so what, like, what's the downside? I mean, what, they're like, these all, I guess, I, I assume gr grew and they were removed and then they were attached and it was fine. What can go wrong? Um, I think the, the, you could the get main scarce in your forehead <laughs> is, is pretty wrong. Uh, the main thing would be like a transplant doesn't take, right? Uh -huh. Or that um, the uh, tissue doesn't get enough nutrients and they have to watch out and make sure that the tissue stays would alive. Would it start dying on your forehead? Uh, yeah, like you, okay. you if, uh, nice. if you have <laughs> the, but, yeah. but um, the butt. risk that you're taking, these are all research studies, right? So these are not like, um, these that are not a something where they're, they're, they're not doing a hundred of those a year, right? Right. Um, so they're watching out to see what happens over time. Um, if you get a standard transplant, um, you're going to be on uh, stuff that suppresses your immune system for a long time. And that has a really serious side effects. I, I actually know somebody who's had um, uh, two liver transplants. And her, I know, um, and her major, by the way, I gave a talk um, at uh, uh, a nerd night, actually, and she came after me, and I was like, thank goodness I didn't have to talk after that. It was an amazing story. But her main issue after all of that surgery was just, I want to, you know, adjust my immunosuppressants. Like, that's how big a deal it is. So we no mm. longer need to grow organs within our bodies. We can now grow them outside of our bodies and that's gonna be the future rather than inside. Well, I think being able to use your own cells as opposed to a transplant that someone else's cells, Correct. which would require that immunosuppression, our like the big cells deal. outside of our body though. In or out, if it's our own cells. I think that's okay. the big deal. Okay, great, right. let's, let's move on. Right. What's that? Uh, there was a group, and I forget where, that was looking into um, uh, breast tissue engineering. Back to, are you good right. at math? Yeah. So, yeah. no is, is... No is wrong. No is wrong. Yes is wrong. 
Uh, yes. Incorrect. Oh, it oh. is a trick question. Okay. Oh, 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 this is one of like one of those word an problems right in here. junior high. Try me. Try you? Try me. Oh. Try you? oh. Um, yeah, you go. Out of range of question. Out of yeah. oh, no, no. beyond the scope of this I, question. I, I, as a matter of fact, um, wouldn't help. Let's that. That's what I would say. Oh. But she does want a math question. Yeah, she's like, I just do algebra. Not as good as you? Oh, no, 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 no. no. That oh, is not, no. He was just him All the showing next slides are photos of his <laughs> It just shows how amazing. Doing All right, another equations. answer. Sometimes? I think let's go with that one. Sometimes. Sometimes. All Sometimes. right, Eureka. All right, Eureka. Eureka. Come on down. Come on down. So now are you sometimes good at math? <laughs> I used to be good at math. And, not anymore. and then what happened? I got old. God. iPhone. You didn't. You, <laughs> iPhone. You found out. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Brutal. Yeah. So you can you can count the beers. All right. Well, now you could try to be good at math again. We got 300 mathematical pattern puzzles. There for your Bart ride, huh? That's <laughs> super fun. All right. Round of applause. <laughs> Woo! She's like, I'm bad at math now. We're like, good. Well, you are gonna Here's hate more this math. book. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a lot more math. She shows her boyfriend, I want a book on math. He's like, oh my God. And Winona what Ryder is also not good at math. Winona Ryder is high. Well, if you flash it up that fast, I wouldn't be either. I mean, that's unfair. That's a terrible quiz. Yeah, it's a tough one, yeah. Whoa. Oh, okay. So uh, this is a 5,000-year-old um, word problem. Uh, yeah, what? they've been around for a long time. This is on a this Mesopotamian uh, stone tablet. Um, and I wow. believe it has something to do Pardon. with, uh, you have you know, this many hectares of space and this many, how many workers do you need to hire to get all of the grain it's out of this? It's a story problem. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And this, this is like, like a Mesopotamian a, SAT test. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks more like a seeing yeah. chart for Southwest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is true. This is true. You had, no. to, you had to color in all of the circles with like a number two pencil. Oh, look, and the United guy's getting kicked off the plane. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so can, can you actually interpret this? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, but the, the goal is not to do the problem, but to emphasize like how long math's been around, right? I can't believe they still stuck with math after this thing. <laughs> Look, you know, I'm like, no, we're done. Let's just no, like randomly they guess. Were like, what about if we just use numbers? Maybe that'd be easier. That's how numbers oh are my made. Gosh. Reproductions are wow. basically those of Justin. That guy just went by one name. What a baller. What a baller, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like the share of the 1930s math scene. And so what's the purpose of showing us how long yeah, math Why are we around? doing this, Doc? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm a teaching professor. So my about 75, 80% of my job is teaching. And I hear this all the time. People who will tell me, oh, you know, but I'm, I'm not good at math. Nobody can know whether they're good at math. No, like, unless you're Euler in, or maybe Newton, you, you can't know, right? There's so much mathematics in the world, you have not touched most math. Uh, so anybody that self-diagnoses themselves as bad at math um, doesn't have enough data. They would need to do math for lifetimes to actually figure out whether they're good at math. Does that work on math tests too? Like these are not the math problems I'm good at. And you just turn <laughs> it back in. Again, I feel like your prescription is like someone's like, I hate this. And you're like, do it for a lifetime. <laughs> like, it sucks. <laughs> uh, I, I think the, the goal is um, you people end up doing the math when they're interested in putting in the time, or they really want to solve the problems that they need that math to solve. Um, but like we, we need that bar, bitch. Yeah, uh, we, I, I don't think anybody looked at this and went, oh, this is fun, right? Let's right. figure out how many workers we need to hire. This is amazing. Um, and by the way, having done that does not mean like you could have an expert at this who would be terrible at differential calculus, right? Like the or graph <laughs> no, theory or whatever. I always heard as a kid. I mean, there's some kids that are good at algebra, others are good at geometry. You uh, know. And I think that oftentimes that's just a matter of uh, being there at the right place at the right time. Uh, like in class. That's what we do. <laughs> I think that's what I mean. <laughs> right, that's what you got to be in just class. Just show up. Uh, that's, that's 90%. Yeah. We, we talk mistake. about people like, oh, you, you know, maybe you're just you're good at geometry. Or maybe like when you started in geometry class, your other classes weren't that hard or it was a class that was later on in the day. You so didn't have you a gold, awake. Didn't right? have a golden apple teacher. Uh, 
potentially teetering you. Yeah. Um, I, but there, but people often go straight towards the um, I'm just inherently good or bad at this thing. Well, I would love to take a math test given by you, because I think I could just say, I'm feeling happy today, and give me like an A+. Plus. Yeah, you'd be like, well, we don't know if you're yeah. good at math or not. Yeah, we still uh, don't. You, it would take a lifetime. <laughs> how do you do hunting. math, how do you administer math tests? Oh, I mean, uh, when I'm giving a test that has a lot of math in it, right? I mean, the, the goal is um, not, is to teach it in terms of this is a tool. We're all going to learn how to use this tool. It doesn't have to do with the fact whether you have some sort of weird magical connection to the material because nobody does, right? You just we're just going to put in the time, um, and you have to evaluate based on getting the answers. But it's engineering, right? I mean, if you get the wrong answer, something explodes. So well, I mean, it, it, the mo most of us are just using it to figure out what a twenty percent tip is, fifteen percent if they were terrible. <laughs> right, like that's all we're using math for. That is adult math. <laughs> that's, that's adult math. That's all it. we're doing. I'm glad the two numbers were 20 and 15. Those sound good. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. What, and how many a plus. Thank nice. you. Sweet. And how many total dollars we'll save on our tank of gas if we go to the gas station that's 10 cents cheaper per gallon of gas? I don't do the math there. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. go to the closest one. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> but this is just uh, if you go to the Library of Congress, there's more than 10,000 uh, hits on math. Right. Um, I wish I knew enough math to say I was good or bad at all of the math that's in those books. Does this work in other subjects like, I don't know, biotechnology? <laughs> oh, I you feel uh, like you're not good at biotechnology because that's a problem. I feel like there are certain aspects of biotechnology that I'm not too bad at. And there's lots of biotechnology I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a TV movie scientist where they come in and they go, I have a question about plants. And I'm like, I know the Latin names. Mm. And also about rockets. Well, I can build one. You know, like I just, I know the stuff that I've worked on, like yeah. most people. Sure. So you're just trying to let us know that the extent of our own ignorance is large. <laughs> <laughs> and the extent of our yeah. own intelligence. Yeah. No, well, no. Mine. We're just mine. <laughs> All right, so that was okay. It's like a self-esteem booster then. <laughs> yeah, no, what? I <laughs> hope so. Okay. Everyone feel better about themselves? Is everyone good at math? Yeah. I don't they know is the answer. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. I always thought I was, but... 780, the, uh, that's the answer. That's a good answer, too. It, you, she's no. got the book. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she's now <laughs> our new math expert. Yeah. <laughs> she just does all the patterns. Yeah, anybody yeah. good at projection screens? I feel like it was the technology part of the biotechnology that we're failing on right Here now. Here we go. And TV blue I, screen. Yes. We're working on it. I do like that then. Wait, I, so I is there, that uh, do you end up teaching a lot of math then in, uh, in your biotechnology courses? Yeah, my, my main class for the past five years is pretty much like an applied math course. Yeah. All right. Oh, Which I was not inherently good at I actually the first two and a half two and a half times that I taught it it was like I think I know what's going uh -huh, on uh -huh. you just showed this slide all the time just cover <laughs> your ass we can that's why know. you thought of this idea <laughs> it takes a lot no, of the heat off know. I'm good at math. maybe uh, give okay. us a quick example of some of the applied math that you are teaching for biology for biological purposes um, so some of my favorite math is about how fluids move uh, and about how things diffuse within fluids, which, which is associated with the liver problem, right? Like how do you get nutrients to those cells? So it's kind of the mathematics of, well, how would they get there? They would need to flow, like oxygen would need to flow along in the blood, and then it would need to diffuse to reach the cells um, that are you know, distant from the blood. Um, and it's the same mathematics that describes how planes fly, the same mathematics that describes um, how weather works, just going small and viscous instead of um, airy uh, and big. Um, and uh, that's one of the things I really like about a lot of the applied math classes, is you see the stuff that you're using is a, speci uh, like a, a really specific version of something that can be applied to all of these systems around you. Normally, we would use how much the heart is pumping blood to that liver, but in this case, the heart only, the blood only has to go to the liver, so therefore it is less. So the issue is that the, the liver is really just a bunch of cells that are constantly using a lot of nutrients, right? 
So you've got to get not just blood into the liver, but it's then got to go through a very fine series of pipes to reach all of the cells in there. Or you get the problem you were talking about earlier, where some of the cells are like, ah, I'm dying, and then you get gangrene. All right. Classic. All right. Gross. <laughs> all right, your next question. Let's do it. How many microbes are there inside uh, you? Oh, boy. You can count right now. Yeah, Let's take your time. Get us an answer. You're never going to be good at math, though, so. How many microbes? Oh, man. I feel like... 12, I think, is a pretty strong 12, answer. 12. I think Ron it's good. Nice. You like probably have a mass. Dozen. A dozen? I don't know. Let me just the, the person who said 12 is technically dead. <laughs> okay. 50 trillion. Ooh, 50 trillion, 50 strong. Trillion. We, got an ad, we got another one in the 50 back. 50 trillion? Too. Another an guess okay, in the back. No. Hold on. I'm going to say guess, not answer. <laughs> so for a while, it was 10 times 70 trillion? 10 times 70 trillion. Okay, so... Um, times so 700 trillion? Uh, it's, um, it's between those two. 10 or t between 10 and 70 trillion? Uh, between, <laughs> between 10 times 70 and 50. Do we have a plus or minus, like, five on this one? Yeah, yeah. Well, Instead of 10 times 70, can we not say 700? Am I missing something yeah. here? <laughs> right. So it's bit Oh, we got another, uh, another answer down here. <laughs> <laughs> None of us None are. None of us are. That's right. Oh. 13. <laughs> 13. 13. He's got you one. You are a, one. a little one. bit closer. <laughs> down another one. Hold on. You're getting You're warmer. Right. So a little bit closer. Uh, 300 trillion. Let's go with 300. That's pretty 300 trillion. All right. Those. Come on down. Hey, what's a few hundred trillion? Come on down. Come on down. You're Move all your little microbes. All of oh. them. All, let's say, 259 trillion of them. Yeah. Now, now, how did you, was that just a random guess? Between 70 and 700. Did the math. All right, you just threw it out, yeah. Somebody's good at math. Oh, look at that. You, you. <laughs> He's good at. <laughs> you are good at math? Uh, I'm an engineer. But <laughs> do you like Do you like microbes? Uh, Be honest. Well, I like myself. All right, you got microbes. Damn, I, baby, I think you should learn to love you. I think you deserve your own little microbe. Oh, oh, that's a. And what microbe is this? An E. coli microbe. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Come on, you can take that. To, it looked like a Rastafarian E. E. coli microbe. Actually, you yeah, see this guy. Like, brah, brah. <laughs> that's right. Well, I'm out of curiosity. What, what are you going to do with this now that, now that we've given it to you? I like how you, you're like accusatory almost, like he asked. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I what do you plan to do with it? Are you going to bring Are you going to snuggle with it in bed or? Uh, I'll probably give it to somebody else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> give, her, give him a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe he's not. You're not, not going to hold on to an E. coli microbe? It's like, uh, Those honey, are golden. Honey, Te it's technically, our, it's depending our, on the kind of E. coli, giving it to someone else could be a violation of the Geneva Convention. Ooh. Oh. The Jeanette Convention. I don't know. I got nothing. Good point. We got to get a... Is E. coli oh, a little Thanks, upset Neil. you didn't get a book? I'm just a little curious. Yes? No? Is E. coli Wish you had a book. A book? Or Mr. E. coli. W Wish you had a book? No. No, I think it's stuffed animals stuffy. even better. Each I of you. I feel like some. So you, you've each got around ballpark 10 trillion human cells, um, and 30 trillion microorganisms. But I didn't want to bounce around too much on the different numbers. Um, but the the interesting thing. So it, partially, you have about three times as many uh, microbes. For every human cell, you've got three times as many microbes. If your aliens look down upon us right now, and they were just going on a per cell basis. They would look at everybody in here as a spaceship for bacteria, right? Oh, these bacteria have a very excellent mechanism for moving around. Um, and uh, you're really a walking ecosystem. There's, a, a, on average, about a thousand different species in each of your guts. And they all do different things, uh, different chemistry, and wor they're working together, talking to one another, chemically. Speaking of maths, which is 30 between 50 and 700 trillion? I'm, I misremembered. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Give but, hey. He's Keep the E. coli. Enough. Keep it. <laughs> He's like, I'm keeping my prize. And so, so maybe we touch on the importance of what, what, how do these cells work together, these trillions of cells in our body or in our um, 
or in our guts and our microbiomes, how, how do these work together? Um, so the gut does a lot of the work that our cells don't, right? Uh, basically, it is, uh, when things are going well, a happy home for a bunch of cells that um, are going to do stuff to the matter which is passing through the gut, don't think about it too much, um, uh, to process it for us. Uh, they're basically passengers that do work while they're in there. So it's like oh, yeah. if we had people on the Muni like making license plates. <coughs> That's Close. dark, but a, yeah. yeah, true. Okay. I mean, this, I feel like if they wanted to. This is future dystopian of SF. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like yeah, everyone's just standing there. We might as well Might as well, well put something. them to work, yeah. Look at their phones. Makes sense. How long do they stick around? What's their, you know, cycle? Do they die and regenerate or, or die and um, new ones come in or? Oh yeah, they're they're constantly ones that are exiting. Um, okay, that's the pooped out part you didn't yeah, want us to touch yeah, upon. Yeah, well, we're classy like he comics. He, he we said don't do pooped out humor. before, but now he's like, I don't know, I don't want to uh, talk. Uh, I wanted to dance around it this time. It was a little more literal. Um, yeah, they're they're uh, growing. They uh, if they don't grow out of control, if they grow at a, a, a proper rate where the in and out balances, then there's just a stable population doing what needs to be done. And That's okay. <laughs> All right, man. That's great. Right. Matter of fact, so let's. Uh, we just saw a question. We had a question. Yeah. Is this where like parasites come into play? Like when you go to Mexico and you get weird bowel movements after that? Is like the parasites stay in your gut? Is this the same sort of thing as the microorganism? Or? Um, I so parasites is a broad definition. There's a lot of different kinds of parasites. Um, usually when it's down to the microbe level, they're, they would just talk about it as an infection. Um, parasites are, are usually more complicated. Um, uh, animals that are doing something similar, right? But the parasites are 100% freeloaders, right? Like they're doing, potentially doing damage um, or uh, they're not doing any benefit for you. They're just, you know, taking resource. Um, these would be more symbiotic in most cases. And if we didn't have these, the you know, thousand species, you know, per gut, would we not be able to poop it out? Uh, well, you you would. Would it just have take a lot longer? Digestive complaints until the gut was recolonized. Ah. Oh shit! Yeah, we're going, all nice. We're going there, dude. We're going colonial. We're going colonial. All right. So, so like, they're, they're we have to wait till Christopher Columbus gets back into my body for me to have a nice, smooth Santa bowel movement. Maria. There, yeah. there, there's actually an argument that the purpose of the appendix is um, because when we didn't have a lot of cleanliness in our lives as early humans, um, we would end up um, shitting ourselves silly on a regular basis. Mm. And the appendix <laughs> like was a reservoir. That. I'm a silly dude, shit myself. <laughs> uh, was a reservoir to recolonize uh, when uh, that got cleared out. Um, and that's just a theory. Just a theory. We Nobody should find knows. someone who shits a lot and <laughs> test their <laughs> like appendix. A sil not, but like not a serious shitter. Like someone who's silly. Yeah, but it gets a good laugh out, <laughs> out of it, you know? The village shitter. That's <laughs> well, what I'm talking about. Somebody had a really rough vacation, right? And then she went minute, to Mexico. The appendix. She'll never yeah. go back. Yeah. Interesting. Hey, let's take a quick question, then we'll keep moving on. I'm a silly shitter. I'm a healthy dude. It's, I guess it's more of a comment. Um, I really enjoy learning about the microbiome, and um, I found it really fascinating to learn how important it is at the early stages of life. Um, you know, like the differences in, in children who were born of a C-section or who weren't breastfed um, and the type of diet can all really affect um, mm -hmm. their them later in life um, in terms of um, like metabolic syndrome and, uh, like, and like having asthma or allergies. Like I, um, I, I learned that, the, that your microbes allow your body to learn like what's good and what's bad. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a disruption in that, then that's then that could cause things like allergies. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you want to touch on it, but I thought that was really interesting. And um, I guess I'm glad that I'm learning this before I had children. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, are you applauding for like not yet having children or applauding for like thinking uh, about children? Learning before you yes. have children. Yes. Yeah. 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 Smart. Prepare your microbiome. You're still breastfeeding, right? I am. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's Myself, though. Right, that's right now? <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a silly shitter. Okay. 
Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know where that came. Touch, touch on that. That's a fascinating point. Uh, so the the microbiome is something that we're just really starting to have the tools to study, and the microbiome is um, what. What is the genetic profile of the bacteria, mostly in the gut, right? Um, and what are they doing? Uh, and uh, there's some evidence that people that have um, sort of different ecologies in their gut, um, that they process food differently, um, that they potentially process uh, pharmaceuticals differently. So there's a lot of interest in, um, uh, like, if you take a pharmaceutical, how is it going to affect you? Is it going to make you sick or not? And maybe the microbiome is involved in that as well. On the immune side, um, when you're uh, developing, uh, early development, uh, your body is actually going through a process of learning what is you and what is not you. Um, and the idea of what sort of uh, challenges is the body expecting. So. Um, there have been theories that uh, you see a lot of asthma because kids don't play dirty enough, right? They don't have enough exposure to, to stuff so that their immune systems uh, potentially get hyperactive. Um, mm. Not my just, field, We but should just have kids playing right, like, in this neighborhood a lot. Oh, the tenderloin, right. Yeah, just in right. the tenderloin. Once a week, like, give a shit. Dirty. Yeah, lick the sidewalk once a week, and yeah. you'll be able to run it a 12-mile without... Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Gotta find yeah. the right balance. The right yeah. balance. Like got, that. It, got, got it, got it, got yeah. it. Okay. Again, learning before you have kids. Got yeah. it, got yeah. it, okay. From our scientist uh, two shows ago, we learned that there's an equal amount of neurons in the human gut as there is in a cat's brain. Yeah, um, fuck those cats. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have against cats? <laughs> they stupid. Okay. They don't have as many neurons. That's true. You're something. right You're right about that. And so th there's just a lot more there than we've investigated and then we know about and even even decisions like a c-section can affect the development of a microbiome in a child something you had no idea about and it's important to en enlighten families before they have children about that kind of stuff so you're going to stop performing c-sections yeah. finally <laughs> you're like i shouldn't do this back alley <laughs> c-section <laughs> um uh, i'm trying to quit um <laughs> all right let's move on let's do it. Okay, so how many microbes are there on oh the boy. planet Earth? You should just be able to multiply the 14, 30, tri 30 yeah. trillion by 7 billion. 14. Just repeat your previous answer. Just tell 15. me how many, how many right. zeros you think are on that number. It's just going to be 30 trillion. <laughs> All right, let's go back here. Yeah, yeah plus 8. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> oh, but nice. we, have a, we have a pretty good estimate, actually. Six. He doesn't know. Sixteen. <laughs> when he said we don't know, he meant I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thirty million times about seven billion. Oh, Ooh, smart! But this microbe's not in humans. Well, she too, has right? the math book now. Has, yeah, You're that's welcome, that's my lady. Lady. But I feel like there's microbes not plus, in humans. Plus a yes. few. Yes. Ah. say plus a few here and there on the ground and the water. And the and animals and the vet. I I get a hint. They're mostly in the ocean. Okay, oh. he, he, he's, he's raised his hand many, many 16. <laughs> you know, I think in another like 10,000 years, we'll have the right answer. For there, there, there were 16 at the beginning of the show. There are now three and a half million. <laughs> so, Google. Google. Google is to the Google 10 to the 100, yes. is that right? Yes. Less than Google. Less okay. than Google. So, yes. but half, more than Yahoo. Half we Google. Can do this. <laughs> yes. more. Less than Zinger. Google, more than Yahoo. <laughs> it's called Oath now. Oath. If I say yeah. less than Google, more than Yahoo, do I win? Way more than Pets.com. Way more than. <laughs> Not as much as Google. Let's just ask Jeeves. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Remember that? And where'd that go? Alta Vista. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe we're, we go we're with aging the, ourselves right now. Maybe go with the amount of zeros. Yes, amount of zeros. All right. A Twin number. Twenty-eight uh, zeros. 20. That's close enough. That's close yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. For me, three. Rika. Rika. All right, we're getting right there. Okay, Come on down for your prize. No, no, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Applause, one, two, everybody. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, 30. 30. You know, our previous winner didn't appreciate his e stuffed animal, but we hope you appreciate, and it does get a little bit worse, a nice cancer micro. <laughs> yeah, cancer <laughs> micro. That Make a Wish Foundation prize, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, uh, now this thing, now you can actually fix this. You can actually repair this cancer, it really is. Turn it inside out. 
Oh. Watch Ooh. this. You've cured cancer. You're about to get rid of the cancer and have a healthy cell right here. So Look at that. Cell, so white blood cell. Nice. If only it were that easy. It's a Dr. No. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I, I love the fact that as a cancer cell, it looks so happy. Like it's a big it thing. is a happy <laughs> cancer cell. Now, what are you going to do with this one? Uh, I don't know, but I'm still wondering if that dude with the nose on the forehead drowns when it rains. Oh, smart. Oh, good question. Um, that's a good, good that's question. Good yeah. I think they issue an umbrella uh, post-surgery. Yeah. Or <laughs> okay. a hat. I Probably I would just wear a, a hat. A nose hat. Very interesting question. Give round of applause. This guy right here. He's taking it all home. Taking it all home. All right. They're not even stuffed animals anymore. They're like stuffed diseases, you know? It's like history teachers when Hamilton came out. They were like, finally, something! <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's more, um, we need to buy a gift for a graduate student. I don't understand what they're, oh, they do something with biology. Here we go. Finally, a cute way to depict cancer. I've been searching for this. It's the cutest way to make fun of their degree. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Nice. So you said that most of the microbes are in the ocean. Yeah, you, most um, are in the ocean, but the... The reason I, I like to emphasize the number is if we're trying to do things as biologists, synthetic biologists, this means that there are microbes that have figured out how to solve so many different problems because they live in so many different environments on the planet. And they've done that by, uh, you know, through evolution, evolving these really, really clever ways uh, to deal with issues, and what we try and do is to say, oh, okay, so there's an interesting enzyme that does this reaction, uh, and that bac uh, bacteria evolved it to survive in this environment. Could we use it to solve a problem that people have? And there's a lot of solutions out there. One nonillion solutions, potentially. So, so the, study, <laughs> the study of microbes... Same. Nailed it. We're in the infant yeah. stages of studying microbes and seeing these different applications that they've had on nature and then seeing how we can potentially use them for human purposes. We don't even know everything there is to know about the organisms know. that we use in <laughs> labs every day, right? And there's just tons of bacteria out there that we've you know, never collected and looked at. Just mm. tons of potential interesting solutions to problems. Okay. All right, let's take a question. Is there an estimate on what percentage of organisms are yet to be discovered on planet Earth? Um, is there an estimate of how many organisms yet to be discovered? Um, not that I know of, but it is by far most, right? Uh, we have, you know, complete genetic profiles of a minuscule number of organisms. We have kind of identified and given a name to another set of organisms, and most of them are probably like in seawater and nobody has actually gone in and gone, well, that we're gonna give that one a name and figure out what it does. And many of them may do the same thing as other organisms that we know about, right? Uh, but there's a, a lot that we have yet to explore. And we're gonna move on to the next question. <laughs> So, uh, how long have humans been engaged in genetic manipulation? Ooh. Are, we, are we counting Dr. Frankenstein? Like that era of genetic mani manipulation? You know, mm. the cool thing was, Frankenstein was all surgery, right? He oh, he was just stitching about parts about together. together but this is, I, I just taught a seminar that it, um, talked about Frankenstein. Do you know why Frankenstein was gigantic? Why? In the book, because... Well, Frankenstein's monster was gigantic, but whatever, we're not... That, oh, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you. Thank you so we got a fan here. Okay. I deserved that. <laughs> um, why uh -huh. the creature was so gigantic? Um, because it was easier to do surgeries on. It was just e easier to connect the various bits up because ah, it was large. it was just large. so big. That's actually in the book. I love That's that detail. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> More of a guess. Um, thousands of years ago, when we started agriculture, fifteen years ago. Uh, so you said thousands. thousands. Oh, thousands. I'm sorry. <laughs> you were like nineteen ninety-seven. That's when we started growing potatoes, right? I, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Yeah. Is that, is that it? Really? Eureka! Eureka! She's talking about corn and wheat. All oh, right. So agriculture certainly is one of the ways we genetically modify, you know, ourselves. Another way is, of course. Through dating, through through breeding, you know. Are, are, are you uh, are you are you 
Cur- uh, do you do, do any online dating? No, not at the moment. Not in the moment? Have you ever done it? You might do it in the future? N- needs, you're like, I don't want to talk her, about this. Her boyfriend's <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> What's that? You will have to dump the guy. So uh, we have this love at first click, the ultimate guy to online dating. Oh, my gosh. Give a round of applause for her, everybody. Woo! Hopefully you can genetically modify some new humans. Hopefully you won't future. just give that to somebody else as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hell engin- of a first date gift. <laughs> engineer, you guys might actually want to trade with the en- engineer, might want to give the E. coli stuff. To the oh. you know, hey, can no. I introduce you to the engineer? He's got an E. coli, it's great. <laughs> or cancer. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, so, but, but the, the real answer is human breeding. Is that, was that the real answer of when genetic manipulation started? So I feel like that was way before agriculture. Couple different options. Um, so potentially puppies. This is a 10,000 year old cave painting. You can see the dogs. So dogs have co-evolved with us to a certain extent. Those not deer. Um, okay. Also uh, agriculture. Uh, that's 10,000 years of corn. That's natural yeah. corn, that little tiny, um, not particularly delicious thing. Baby corn, I yep. know it. Uh, and also, you know, uh, 50,000 years of dating, it depends on how you, you want to call it. Yeah, but dating is a <laughs> euphemism at a certain yeah, point yeah, back oh, in sure. the day. It was more Tinder back then, it wasn't <laughs> dating. <laughs> Tinder to start the fire, to signal oh, that see, you, yes. the I cave. Yeah, I know how to build fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Look at th- th- this, is, this is enlightening because it tells us that we have been involved in genetic manipulation for a long time. But with the technologies that we have today, the ways that we are genetic, genetically manipulating is, is different. Um, we, for example, and let's have you chime in on this, on some, of the fut- on some of these ways that we're genetically manipulating now and without doing certain longitudinal tests on our health after doing these gen- genetic manipulations, we're not quite sure what it would do to us to make a change to our health or make a change to our food. Mm-hmm. We can so um, I think a lot of the genetic manipulations that we're interested in are product-based, not you know, person-based. Um, the first genetic manipulation was in uh, the early 70s. I think it was like 73, um, where they took DNA from uh, antibiotic-resistant E. coli and moved it into another flask and were able to transfer the DNA and the resistance along with it. And five years later, Genentech was making uh, insulin, basically, using bacterial techniques. Um, And the reason for that is that we need a lot of insulin, and without those techniques, I think it's six tons a year or more uh, made, and it's all made using biotechnology, because trying to get it from animal blood is not great for a number of reasons. Um, so a lot of the manip- ma- manipulations are typically to produce something very similar to what we have now in a system that makes it less expensive or um, uh, more regular, for example. Um, like uh, artemisinin was a project out of UC Berkeley uh, for an anti-malarial slash anti-cancer drug. Um, and it comes from plants, and that's expensive, right? But the other nice thing about making it in basically giant beer vats, right, the kind of big tanks that you would see in the back of a brewery, um, is that if there's a hurricane and it wipes out the crop, you can't actually go, can you guys do without malaria medicine this year? You know, that you can regularize the I like how you asked that, too. <laughs> I'd be nervous but, yeah, with yeah, that yeah, ask. Yeah, that's a, that's like a tough ask. Like a nerd with malaria. T- can you guys? Yeah. <laughs> so then, so. What about some of the effects of potentially removing things like the rotting enzyme out of tomatoes, stuff like that? Um, So manipulation of food, typically, um, there's in many cases more known. Like uh, if you take a single enzyme out of food, you can probably point to other foods with similar Uh, similar structures that at least have less or maybe don't have that enzyme or have a different version of that enzyme. So there's opportunities to um, intuit from other things that you know the relative safety of the manipulation that you're making. And then on humans, it's a completely different story. Yeah. That's something that we're just now... Um, in humans, the only kinds of genetic manipulations that people are really seriously pursuing, they take immune cells out, 
they manipulate them so that they will more effectively fight a cancer, and you do that in cases where um, you know the alternative is much worse than the risk, right? Yeah, where you're either dead or you're trying something that will hopefully heal you. Yep. Yeah. We got a question there, did um, we? Let's. You know, I think there is a question. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, we can do a quick question. Quick question. All right. The answer will be quicker. <laughs> Um, my question is, so when people get like bone marrow transplants and that's like re rebooting their immune system, is that a type of genetic manipulation? Uh, so the cells are not genetically manipulated, but you might be getting cells that aren't your cells, they're cells that are genetically similar. Um, so effectively then you would be a body with mostly your cells and a couple of cells that came from someone else hanging out. And secret, most of us are probably that, because we probably left a couple of cells in our mom, and our mom probably has a couple of cells that are left in <laughs> oh, us. Oh, okay. wow. All right, yeah. Speak for yourself, right, man. Come on, buddy. <laughs> I didn't leave any so cells in my mom. Show, geez. There, there's actually, I'm sorry, I know you're in a hurry. I'll do this as fast as I yes. can. They're called chimeras. There was actually a woman um, where uh, they tested her kids and they said, these aren't your kids. And she's like, they came out of me. Uh, they are my kids. I've been there. Yep. Uh, I <laughs> oh, want to hear well, more about this your after kids, the they're show. My kids. I just know they're not my kids. They're uh, kids. And, they're not and it was because she had uh, different populations of cells in her body were um, basically her and her sister melded in the womb. Wow. And That's some shit right there. Why haven't we been talking about this when, the whole when time? When they took the blood sample, the wow. blood did not match the kid because different tissues came from a different genetic source. <laughs> yeah, this is Jerry Spears. Yeah, you are so not the father. You are not the mother. mother. Yeah, yeah Maury. <laughs> Something that is discussed in How to Defeat Your Own Clone, a book available. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, okay. uh, pitch it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Okay, so what are blue jeans made of? Not including denim metal zippers and rivets, and the polyester in the sewing thread. What else is oh. in the blue jeans? What makes a blue jean except the things that make a blue jean? Who yeah. has not answered? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Microbes. Huh? He said microbes. microbes. Well, microbes. Let's, uh, we'll assume that the blue jeans have been washed. Okay. Yeah, just wash so your I can jeans tell you some things that are on my blue jeans you don't want to Yeah, you really need to wash your jeans. Plants. 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 Mm. Um, what from plants? Uh, the proteins from plants. Oh, yeah, she's just saying mm. words now. I, I say, <laughs> go with Let's blue try another one. Go with the blue <laughs> jean pants. They grow out in the wild. <laughs> Protein. No, 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 no. Not good enough. Yeah, nope. we're, it's we're getting close. Okay. Cellulose? You're good at math. <laughs> it's cellulose? Um, in the cotton, in the denim, yeah. Is that but the answer? Besides that. Oh, besides, besides, that? That? besides that? Besides that. Besides all the answers besides that you have. Yes. Yeah. What is the other thing? Trick question. It's you. Blue. <laughs> oh, you know what? So I wish I uh, uh, will <laughs> assume, <laughs> and I hate to say this on stage, I'm outside of the pants. Okay. What? I'm outside. sorry, what now? Outside. Outside of the oh. pants. I'll, get, I'll give a hint. Are any of the things that we've discussed blue? Uh, uh, so ah. Ah. So she indigo. Said? Who said indigo? Indigo. Yeah, indigo. It's a plant. Uh, indigo comes, it's a, it is a Die chemical that plant. comes from plants. Yes, indigo. Eureka? Eureka. Eureka. <laughs> Come on it's down. Give her some, is it give her really some blue birthday? shit. She wants to trade it up is? a book. What? We Kim. have a birthday in the house. Too. Oh, yes, your birthday. Oh, happy oh. birthday. Oh. You're 21, that's amazing. That's it's amazing. 22, right. okay. Like okay. Good. Since this, you know, we're talking about biotechnology, talking about DNA. We're talking about very tiny prizes. We have a very small one for you. You want to open this up. And you can see it's a little Eureka tiny book. This is from Tiny Publishings. She's here now. Somewhere. Uh, Where's there? Where is she? Right back there. Yeah, hey. she makes tiny little books at tinypublishings.com. And so this is tiny DNA strand with our faces on it. <laughs> happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah, all right, Happy give birthday. her a round of applause. Yes. Yay. Also, fun fact, uh, India, the name of the country from Indigo, the dye, that's what they were. Oh, yeah? Anyway, whatever, no big deal. <laughs> oh, wow. Just in, bring that in. Indigo was first discovered in India? Yeah, and that's what they were, they, that was one of the things that they were trying to get, I guess. I don't know. Indigo. I don't know, history. 
And so that I don't either. And so indigo is then a, a plant that we extract what from in order to dye jeans blue? Indigo is a material you extract from the plant. So the oh. dye is something that you get from crushing up plants. But so crushing the plant. Yeah, but okay. we haven't done it that way in a long time. Okay, and now so this, yeah, you're okay. going to show us the process right here. Yeah, now we do it from oil, right? So you uh, because it's too expensive and time consuming to get it from plants. So you take some oil and then you burn some oil to heat the oil up to do chemical reactions to it to turn it into indigo. So you got indigo, um, and you one can't. Step. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> it's a it's a many arrows, um, but you can't dye pants with indigo. Uh, because if you could put indigo in water and sort of dip the pants in, um, and then you wash them, they would go white again. So it's insoluble in water, so you add a big reducing agent, basically a giant thing, to turn it into leuco indigo, which is white. Oh, wow. Uh, that is water soluble. Add it to water, dip the pants in, and you get blue jeans. This is so breaking bad. There's just so there much. Oh, see it's, that? there's so much blue meth here. It's so much worse uh, because actually you don't actually dip the pants. The yarn goes through this bath at like 70 miles an hour, right? Like they've been, the, the pants companies have got this down. Um, so, so, so they have a big bath of this mixture and the yarn runs through the bath at 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour and it's moving so fast when it comes out of the bath it dries itself really fast and as it dries the leuco indigo oxidizes back into mm -hmm. the blue and it gets caught up in the fabric. So why's so. it so expensive? Huh? Why's it so expen uh, expensive? You're like it's three steps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. could have been. So easy. Look we just did it right now. And then we had <laughs> cotton cloth. Okay so um, John Duber's lab at UC Berkeley and a team of undergraduates um, that I co-advised were working on a project to do this biologically. So they took cotton cloth, they made indican in yeast. And oh, yes, we oh, indican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know oh, what I'm talking about. about. Yeah, we'll yeah, just yeah. move past. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, indican, <laughs> very similar to indigo, but it's already water soluble. So that reducing agent that ends up in a river somewhere, you don't have to use it, right? Mm. Uh, and then you make an enzyme in another uh, biological system, and that enzyme actually snips a little bit off the indican, and it, after that gets snipped off, it'll oxidize into blue jeans. And wow. this, was, this was about um, five months after we started this project. Let me start the video. Start the video oh. like that. And that is the enzyme causing the indican to turn into indigo. So totally that. biological process. Wow. Well, they made a cow bear. See what the they did there? Bear. Yeah, they made the bear. I, I, uh, applause to the undergrads who worked on this project. They oh. really. Woo. Now, did they make a sativa as well made by yeast, or was it just the indica? What's that? The sativa? No? Talk this, about weed. Talk about we'll weed. talk later. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's, and now, now, who owns the uh, who owns the intellectual rights to this process? We this do gonna, now. Okay. <laughs> we yeah. know how it we is. just got it done right yeah. now. <laughs> oh, it, it is uh, currently in the limbo of uh, the technological licensing office. Uh, uh, but uh, so genetic. You know, we're, we're working. Basically genetic. We're working, we're working, working on it. You're extracting all you can from those undergrads. Okay. I. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, there, there are <laughs> two. Okay. Um, but. Uh, Getting a patent is often a good way to make a thing happen, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, uh, and and uh, we are also uh, we have a couple of PhD students that are working on could this potentially be used for other dyes in different colors? Um, and I think that I'm totally surprised by the way this the fact that we have companies like Bolt Threads that do genetically engineered spider silk, and we were talking about the genetically engineered leather earlier. Um, I did not think that this was a particular direction of interest, but it turns out that the field evolved in this area and it was like, hey, I think that the tools that we're working on in the lab could really make a difference. You're talking about how cheap these are? Mm. Um, they make, uh, I think it's billions of blue jeans every year. I mean, wow. this is a 40,000 tons, last time I checked, of indigo being used every year. Mm. I mean, it's a... a a real potential process for uh, moving to a sustainable system. Right, no more oil. I didn't realize no oil more. was being used for our blue jeans. It's another reason it's to feel used guilty. For everything, bro. Okay, thank you. And, and <laughs> yes. yes, yes. Eureka. It's used for, it's used for <laughs> a lot. Yeah, it's used for a tremendous amount. And in this case, it's used to heat the, in, the mixture of the indigo with the other That's chemical. True. Right. Yeah. That's true. So, so where else can we apply bioengineering for? 
obviously we said leather, spider silk, now we have blue jeans, where else can we potentially apply this? Uh, it's already being applied for a lot of pharma, right? Uh, a lot of the, what they call biologics, which is basically just big molecule drugs instead of small molecule drugs. Um, which comes is like from, frankincense monster, it's easier to work with bigger ones. Oh, I was so hoping you were gonna say Frankenstein no, and not Frankenstein's no, no, monster. I, I was gonna be right on you. He <laughs> <You> remembered. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but but uh, there's a lot of those things happening, but I think too, uh, these small molecules, like chemicals that you don't know are cornerstones of you know, hundreds of products, right? To be able to shift one of those molecules that a thousand different companies buys to do different chemistry to, to make whatever they're trying to make, could have a really big impact. Yeah, great. All right, let's go to the final question. How big is biotech? And I apologize, because it's really hard to do this any other way, but we're going to go with dollars, right? Oh. How big yearly is the so biotech it's industry? It's like, huh? 17. 17. You're nailing it, my I love man. This guy. Can we just give him some? Yeah, 72 <laughs> trillion dollars. 72 trillion dollars. 72, 72 trillion. More. I think that's larger than the world's economy. More? Oh, yeah, billion. Sorry, did you say trillion? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, smaller. Less. 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 Yeah, I will, uh, that would be really good. All right. You don't know what's in his wallet? <laughs> yeah, you don't know me. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting, 100 making billion right. dollars. 100, 100 billion. billion. Uh, that's what Genetic made yesterday. It's a wee bit more, but it's that's getting close. Right. Right. Oh. Wait, we said more? Yep. Yeah, a right. wee bit more. A wee bit more. 300 billion. Ooh, Boom. That's, that's, that's it. That's oh, it. Wow. Oh, look, you nailed it. Come on, yeah. Zika. On the first try. It's going to be huge. I know some Are you gonna investment You're going to give it, uh, give it $300 billion? That <laughs> worked yeah, for yeah. like a year. You just won $300 billion. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give her some yeah. cancer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the mail. Uh, but we do have a wonderful Eureka t-shirt for you. Ooh. There you go. Shut it off. Yay. It was used made with oil, but, you know, otherwise. <laughs> it's got in, It is in go yes. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah, we did. Totally. For, yeah, all that's foresight. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Round of applause. Good answer. 300 million. Yay. And if, if that's the wrong size, visit us after the show. We'll, we'll transfer yeah. it out for the right size. Uh, but those take, wait, quickly, those take 5,000 gallons for, to make a T-shirt because of the cotton. What are we doing about that? I'm sorry, what? I'm, it takes 5,000 gallons of water to make a single cotton T-shirt. Five thousand gallons of water to yes. make that T-shirt? Yes. Not worth it. I. <laughs> not <laughs> worth it. Great what what are it. we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I think that's a bigger we're giving question. Away, we're giving away. <laughs> yeah. Hey. That's, we, uh, yeah. That's the next slide. It's Talk getting hot in here. That's the next okay. show. There's what are we summer doing Summer solstice that? dance. So I I would say in terms of um, water, I don't know where that number comes from. But water <laughs> is used for like the bath, right? The dying. But it's also used for transferring heat around when you're doing big reactions. Um, so uh, I don't know how much of that water is recyclable among. Like it's just water that's cooled and heated and cooled and heated. But water is um, kind of a workhorse thing in most process-oriented stuff. I actually. Uh, when I, way back doing chemical engineering, uh, one of my professors um, always liked to say the most dangerous chemical in most chemical plants is superheated steam. Burn your face off. Like that's probably the, the most dangerous thing and because it, it's also the most common. What are we doing about the amount of water we're using to grow things like cotton? Are we doing anything in a biotechnology for that? Um, I, I would guess yes, but I actually don't know offhand. Okay, maybe yeah. spider silk or something like that. It's really strong stuff. Well, I know spider <laughs> silk, like getting spider silk is a very um, expensive and yeah. labor intensive process. So because they, like, they don't like it when you take their silk and so they attack you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's huh. dangerous. Yeah, I've tried that at home as well. So many times. Yeah, if if you try and just like let them live together, they'll eat each other. Yeah. They're, yeah. Uh, so two, two things, the silkworm silk that people use now is still hand sorted, 
Um, and one of the researchers, I knew him when he was a graduate student who works on the spider silk, um, actually in one of his talks will talk about attempting to milk a spider for silk. Mm. Right, because oh, nice. I needed, I needed. Does that start with like a little small talk? Yeah, then <laughs> a little right. foreplay. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, like, hey, yeah, baby, you gotta, gotta, gotta get the spider. I like mood. what you got going on between your. No, you have to make like legs. little baby spider crying noises, so it oh, starts lactating, so, right. and then that's how you do it. Wow, it's pretty that straightforward. Sounds, that, really. that, that's a YouTube video waiting to happen. <laughs> it sounds like you've read the paper. <laughs> I've read, yeah, I read yeah. all of them. Yeah. So this is a massive trajectory that biotech has had over the last decade or two. And I think that it gives you an idea that uh, this is not just due to new technologies, but an investment, right? People see that uh, being able to do some of the things that we depend on, primarily oil, but pr uh, you could also just say older technologies, um, really need to shift to a different technology. Um, so this is in part technological progress, but it's also you know forecasting. People saying that we need to put funding into understanding these things and um, making them actually possible. And can you go through the difference crops, food? What are the industrial and biologics? Uh, so industrial would mostly be things like the small chemicals or using um, using living things to perform a process that you would otherwise do in a reactor. Um, biologics is mostly going to be drugs. Um, oh, so sure. okay. uh, big molecule, Frankenstein's monster molecule mm -hmm. drugs as opposed to aspirin, tiny molecule style crops. What, what happened in 2006 with crops? Why the spike? We just go over in, on the... On the subsector growth rate chart, the top left, yep. um, it, it looks like we had just did a shit ton with crops in 2006. Oh, interesting. I would have to check. I, that, that is probably, um, if I'm guessing, it's probably a company got bought out. Um, oh, gotcha. So or it's just not um, some economic strength before the recession. Oh, uh, it could be. <laughs> they were like, nothing can kill us. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Monsanto. Subprime so market. Perfect. No. Yeah. And so crops also includes cotton, right, and yeah. leathers and that kind uh, of... Crops would be, I think, it's primarily um, food and clothing. And clothing. Yeah. So the majority of the market right now is cr barely crops. I mean, it's pretty equally split into thirds. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Do you think the trajectory is going to stay around that, or will one of the three categories be more... I think everything has to level off at some point. Um, crops uh, is, you, people are always going to need food. Um, biologics well, are, well. You can genetically manipulate enough. So we probably uh, won't uh, need uh, it, right? Just get everything from like a pill. A pill. Ooh. Well, I mean, there are people in San Francisco that that is the business That's model. That's what they're yeah, doing, right? Little, soylent, little soylent what's up? Pill, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're looking at about a $1 trillion industry by 2030. So it's pretty insane trajectory. Put some money into biotech. Or, or, yeah. or just, I, <laughs> this is not investment advice. Um, <laughs> this is investment advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I think, you know, keep an eye on this as uh, potentially a way for society moving forward to do a lot of things that are hard or difficult or even you know, dangerous, impactful to the environment to do now, to shift over to different options. So it's a message of hope. Yeah. Yes. And money.